Everybody talks about Alzheimer's and dementia as if it's a disease that just starts at one point. Mm -hmm. You know, you are diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease there. That's it. That's not the start. Right before that, you know, decades earlier, there is a continuous cognitive decline that people experience. And, you know, Dean and I go to different communities for talks and before all this uh, pandemic. Uh, when you go into a communities where, you know, their, their health literacy is low, or for example, they haven't had any resources, you actually experience the cognitive decline when speaking with individuals in their 50s and 60s before they even are diagnosed with Alzheimer's mm. disease. And it's it's scary and the numbers are scary. And we never address that. And it's not just brain health. You know, you, you, you hear about brain health all the time. You hear, you, you read great books, but it's that self that is under attack. It's that um, us, it's that us-ness, you know, it's, it's the sense of um, being aware and being present and being able to uh, experience life. That is, we're being robbed of that. Mm. Um, you hear brain fog, you hear memory problems, but not being able to be present for each and every moment in your life, that's what's taken away from people. And that's yeah. scary. And if we have a way of making people attuned where we alarm them that, listen, there is something that you can do where you don't have to go through this. I think that would be a great uh, opportunity and it's a great gift for us to be able to serve people that way. Right. So conventional medical wisdom, at least until recently, is or was that Alzheimer's is something that is going to be visited <clears throat> upon many, many people when they reach, I don't know, late 60s, 70s, mm -hmm. something like that. It's basically a genetic predisposition. Um, in more cases than not, it's a death sentence. There's not much we can do about it. We can't cure it. Um, we can't prevent it. Uh, we can kind of maybe manage it with some drugs, but really there isn't much that we can do. And we're working on a cure, but we aren't very close. Mm -hmm. So how much of that is accurate and where does your work fit in to kind of upend that paradigm? Uh, so the genetic component, let's start with that. Uh, we know the genes that are involved in Alzheimer's uh, with new techniques like GWAS analysis and others where you take large populations who have Alzheimer's and those that don't, you look at the genetic differences, we know about more than 30 genes that are involved in Alzheimer's. Of all Alzheimer's cases, the percentage that's driven by genes, 100% dri driven by genes, meaning that if they have these genes, they will get it. In, 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 in uh, genetic uh, terms, it's called 100% penetrance, uh, like Huntington's disease. Mm -hmm. If a person has the Huntington gene on that chromosome four, they'll get it. Right. But the percentage of Alzheimer's cases are, that are like that is only up to 3%. The other 97% are affected by genes, but they're, they are only risk genes, mm -hmm. meaning that those genes increase your risk, but they're not a foregone conclusion. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you will get it. The, the next highest risk gene is APOE4. About 2% uh, of the population has APOE4, is APOE4 positive. So if you have one of those genes coming from one parent, your risk goes up four times. Hmm. If you have two, one from each parent, about 12 times. That number varies, but roughly those are the numbers. So even if you have two genes fully loaded with these bad genes, 50% of people get the disease. The other 50% don't get it. Why? And when you look at the data coming from Nigeria where the population had higher proclivity for APOE, when they came to US, the disease went up. When you look at the studies that came from UK, which lifestyle, increase your risk six times, even in lieu of APOE4, you realize mm. even with the higher genetic risk of APOE4, lifestyle is a way bigger factor by far. Mm. So all of the genes involved in Alzheimer's, except for those 3% or three genes, are all our lifestyle genes, how your lifestyle affects those genes, which means you have control over it. Even the most benign studies, the ones that had minimal effect, the MIND study and others. MIND study just looked at diet, very well done study. Just a, a diet adjustment reduced your risk of Alzheimer's by 53%. Wow. And that was mm -hmm. a watered down version of the diet we think is optimal. Uh, and how, how, how long 
would you need to be, you know, eating and eating in that certain way leading up to it? It varies from person yeah. to person, their, their background, other things like if they had multiple head traumas, uh, childbirth, like multiple variables. Mm-hmm. But in reality, if you were on that diet for several years, you continually reduce your risk. Like smoking, if you've smoked all your life and if you come off of smoking, come off of that bacon, um, come off of that, uh, you know, yeah. uh, well, let's, then the more years you pass, I believe in smoking, it's after five years. Five to seven years, Five yes. to seven years, you're mm-hmm. back to baseline. Right. Mm-hmm. Meaning that you're back to the lowest risk factor. Um, so the longer you stay on a healthy lifestyle, which is exercise and, and all the things that we say, and especially if you do all of them, the reason I say all of them, let's, coming back to our grandparents, mm-hmm. one of the elements is cognitive reserve or what the term you and I love, idea density. You know, we say that if we have a, a musical band that's gonna be called I- Idea Density. Yeah. They had Idea <laughs> like Density, like yes. <laughs> it's a, it's a mm-hmm. great, great um, uh, concept. They both, both our grandparents had immense Idea Density and, and philosophers, thinkers, but they succumbed to Alzheimer's. Why? The other elements weren't taken care of. They had diabetes, cholesterol, high yeah. blood pressure, Quite horrible sedentary, food. Mm. bad food. Mm-hmm. They didn't yeah. exercise, philosophers are not supposed to exercise for some yeah. reason. But so you have to do all of it. 